Welcome back to Spock Fox. HPE set to host the third quarterly uh, Just Call, where the idea is to speak directly with the public about non-financial metrics, including how the company treats its employees, the environment, and the community. Joining us right now is Julie Packard's Enterprises CEO, Antonio Neri. He is uh, HPE ranked 17 on the Just 100 list. Before we talk about your uh, call coming up, I want to ask you first about a couple of other big issues that are in the news, uh, namely Ginny Rometty uh, stepping down at IBM, somebody you've competed against for the last 20 years. What do you make of of this switch and transition, and how do you how do you assess her legacy? Well, good morning. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I have tremendous respect for Ginny. Um, obviously, she guided the company through a major transformation, um, and uh, I think you know she believed in the strategy and she executed a very aggressive against the strategy. And probably she felt this is the right time to transition. Um, obviously, to be seen where the company goes from here, but. Uh, there is always a time to move on, and um, I wish her, her well. You know, people will, of course, will second guess always uh, what people did during dur during this period from a stock performance perspective relative to the NASDAQ. A lot of metrics, pretty much any, uh, during this period. It's, it's hard to look at this as a, a strict win um, unless you say to yourself that the business was going off a cliff otherwise. How do you, how do you assess that component of it? Well, I mean, think about the composition of the business, right? So obviously they had an infrastructure business that they divested over a period of time. They transformed more into a services software company. And obviously they thought about AI and the cloud business. Right. And uh, they made a very bold acquisition with Red Hat. Uh, I think those are the ins and outs that you have to navigate through it. Right. And I think, you know, the jury's still out about the, the possibility right. to compete and win. But, Ultimately, she repositioned the company, what she felt with the board, where the future would right. be, and um, now is, is the next job. Two other hot topics I just want to get to you uh, with. One is the coronavirus yeah. and what you think it's going to do in terms of impacting your own business and what you're already seeing. Yeah, obviously the coronavirus is a serious issue that uh, we all need to watch and monitor and take action on it. Um, uh, in our case, obviously, we, we have a very small population in China because we set up a different structure in China a couple of uh, years back. But ultimately, I think uh, with the Chinese New Year and uh, understanding the impact to suppliers, it doesn't, we're monitoring. Right now, we are not overly concerned, uh, but obviously something that we have to continue to watch. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you about is uh, your namesake, but not the same company, so people are very clear, Xerox is uh, an HP, HP not being your HP. HP Inc. Correct, but I'm just curious what your view is of that whole situation. You know, I don't have any insights to speak from knowledge. Uh, obviously, you, when you watch from outside, uh, to me, that doesn't make any sense. But uh, Which part doesn't make any sense? I mean, the fact that uh, ultimately you think about the synergies associated with this. Um, you, would I, not, you, would, you would continue to say talk to the hand, which is what they're doing still. No, I think the HP Inc. has a clear strategy how to create value for, for shareholders and stakeholders. Right. And uh, Enrique Lores is someone that uh, I respect tremendously. He and I worked together for many, many years, and I think he's on the right path. But obviously, it's something that uh, the boards and you think Xerox is on the right path? I have. I cannot speak about them. Honestly, I have no knowledge. I have not thought about their performance or anything at all at this point in time. So I think it's more about what is the opportunity to drive value through right. this combination. And honestly, I you're going to be on this just see. call in, in just a minute. Yes, or I should say in about a little, about a little over an hour, I think, from now. Um, one of the things you have done quite successfully is really try to refocus the culture of the company in terms yeah. of how you're thinking about shareholders versus all of these other stakeholders. We just got back from Davos where literally the whole sort of stakeholder concept yeah. uh, has become the thing. The question I'd have is do you think that the shareholders uh, or investors are rewarding you for this approach? Well, I think it's very important. It's becoming way, way more at the top of the list of the conversation we have with shareholders. Um, we, you know, I personally engage, you know, uh, quite a bit, um, you know, throughout the years. In fact, this week, we had a couple of our board members talking to one of our shareholders, one of the largest, and this was the top, top mm -hmm. of mind. This was the, the main topic of the discussion, environmental, social governance, and governance in general, um, including inclusion, diversity, sustainability, and so forth. Definitely is becoming way more important than ever before. Because in the end, what the shareholders value is investing right. in companies and, and thinking about How much pressure the do you feel on yourself? I mean, I'm thinking of what Microsoft just did two weeks ago with this carbon negative program. It's going to cost them real money. 
I mean, it's not, this is, there's nothing free about this. And whether you think that's going to, you, you know, you guys are going to have to have a meeting and say, okay, we're going to have to do this too. It's going to hit profits. It just can't not. Well, just to be clear, we, we are not going to have, we already have this conversation throughout because it's core of our DNA, core of our purpose. You know, right. if you think about it, the core of purpose of our company is to advance the way people live and work and use innovation to solve some of the big societal problems we right. deal every day. And carbon footprint, uh, energy consumption, and so forth at the top of our agenda. We have put very bold goals for ourselves. And ultimately, you can do it through innovation. It's not just about investing more. It's being smart about it. Think about this at the beginning of the innovation cycle.